When is it time for you to give up on your attempts at your current medium and try something different? Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. Crowstar writes, I understand that you can't draw something once, decide it isn't very good, and think that you just suck at drawing at that one thing. You have to practice. My question is, how long or hard do you have to work at one thing or medium before you realize it isn't for you? How can you tell the difference between when you just need to work harder at mastering something and when it just isn't working? For example, what made you make the actual decision just to not go farther with watercolor? Or what makes you decide that you don't like to draw cars? I see so many things that I find beautiful and so much art that I think I could do something like that, that sometimes I wonder what the difference is between could and should. In all the years of teaching, I found that the best way to determine whether or not a student should continue working on a specific medium or try something new was largely based on how interested that student was in that medium. Did they hit a point where working in acrylics, they were just so frustrated with the process of trying to paint fast enough to blend everything out before the acrylic started to dry? Or did they hate using the airbrush to keep it wet long enough that they could blend what they needed before it dried. If a student absolutely dislikes that process, doesn't like to rush, doesn't like the dry time, then yeah, it's time to try something new. There are plenty of mediums where those things don't really factor in. And that could happen with any medium. If somebody hates working slow, they want to get something done very quickly, then a colored pencil probably isn't going to be the best choice for them. Somebody who hates the dry time of oil or doesn't like the scent of oil, then we there are plenty of other options. So those are the factors for me that made me suggest to a student, okay, let's try this instead. Maybe this would be a better fit for you. But as far as a student just not progressing as fast as they expected to with one medium, that's usually not something that I would consider a reason to switch mediums. I mean, acrylic painting, for example. I've had people contact me saying that they've been painting for two months and they think they're just not good at it, so they think it's time to switch and try something else. And I'm thinking, two months? You've been painting with acrylics for two months and you expect to have it mastered. That's always funny to me to read because acrylic painting or any medium that you're going, trying to master, it's going to take you years. Two months is absolutely nothing. You are not going to know how good you are at a medium in two months. Now again, if it comes back to, I hate how fast it dries, I hate this about it, I hate very specific things, then yeah, okay, that's different. That's when we'll go ahead and try something else. But if it's just a matter of you've spent two months, six months, a year, and you're thinking, I'm not very good at this, that's not really a reason I would say to switch. Now, there's nothing wrong with working in several mediums. I work in several mediums. Work in what you enjoy. You're going to learn faster that way. But if you're constantly bouncing around because in two months, in six months, in a year, you aren't as experienced or your skill level is not as high as somebody who's been painting for 20 years, that's just kind of a silly way to look at it. You have to keep in mind how very, very long, how many years go into any artist becoming very comfortable with or really mastering any medium. So getting frustrated that two months, six months, a year later, you're or not as good as someone who's been painting for 20 years, switching mediums probably not going to be the answer you're looking for because you're going to run into the same problem again where you're once again having to start over and learn how to use that medium. Now for the question about watercolor and why I decided to not go further with it, it never really interested me that much. The watercolor artwork that I was seeing at art galleries and art shows that I was attending, I didn't look at those and think, oh my gosh, that is what I want my art to look like. Now this was before the days of the internet where I've now since seen watercolor work work that I think is phenomenal and would love my work to look like. But back then, I just wasn't seeing artwork that I thought, that's what I want to accomplish. So it didn't make sense for me to keep working in watercolor. The other part of that is that I started with acrylics. With acrylics, and even with colored pencil, you do a lot of layering. Layering makes sense to me. Glazing makes sense to me. Those, that's not really how watercolor works. It's a different, a different way of painting. And at the time, I just really enjoyed how acrylics and colored pencil were working. Now, many, many years later, I'm starting to find a bit of an interest in watercolored pencil, so I've been experimenting with that. It's not like deciding at one point that, oh, I don't really like watercolor means you can never explore it again in the future. It just wasn't right for me at that time. I was enjoying acrylics too much and colored pencil too much, so jumping into another medium that I wasn't really enjoying just didn't make sense for me, given the other two that I was so in love with. As for subject matter, I always recommend paint what you love. It's going to show in your work. 
I'm not a huge fan of cars. They just don't interest me. They get me from point A to point B and that is the extent of my interest. When learning to paint, you are going to learn much faster if it's something that you're interested in. I mean, give a 14 year old boy a bouquet of roses that he needs to paint or draw and see how excited he is to start with. It's not that he won't eventually enjoy painting flowers. It's that most 14 year old boys are not that interested in still lifes and flowers. There are exceptions to that, I know, but the point is giving a student something that they were interested in versus something that I wanted them to paint or draw. I definitely saw a big difference in how fast those students progressed. So when I was teaching, I would let students bring in what they were interested in, in painting or drawing. I would actually have them bring several drawings for me to choose from because quite often one thing that they're interested in maybe wouldn't be the best choice for them at that their skill level and where they were at at that time. But if it was something that they were interested in, they were more likely to finish the project, they were more likely to be excited about the project, and they tended to learn a lot more, a lot faster than in painting something that I chose for them instead. I have a frequently asked questions page over on my website. If you cannot find the answer to your question, I have a section where you can submit a question to be featured in one of these videos. I will have a card pop up here so you can check that out. Wait, don't leave yet. Did you subscribe? If not, there is a button right there that you can click. It's around, has an orange arrow going to it, can't miss it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all five of my new art videos every single week. I'll see you guys on Saturday.